What's up guys, Justin here with BCG Essentials. So quick video today, this is about a new feature that just got released as a part of Fluent Materializer. So I've talked about this add-on a bunch in the past. I'll link to some videos. It's basically an imperfection add-on for Blender that allows you to make things look scratched or dented or other things like that. But there's some new features in here specifically having to do with the decals that I wanted to talk just a little bit about. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there's a couple new features inside of Fluent Materializer 1.2. I will link to this video that talks through um, all of the different features, but specifically, I wanted to talk a little bit about the decals and specifically more, I guess, about the procedural decals that just got added. So these are basically decals that you can bring into Blender, but then you can also adjust them um, within Blender itself. So they're actually procedural in the way that they're placed on surfaces. So let's jump over into Blender and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And by the way, I will link to Fluent Materializer in the in the notes down below. And so first off, the way that the decals initially worked is um, what you can do is you can go into the library, you can add new decals, right? So if I click on add right here, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me an empty, which I can then tap G and then hold control and that'll actually place on a surface, right? So I place an empty here and then all I have to do is just plug that decal into my mix layers over here. Now we're gonna add multiple different decals. So I'm gonna add so I'm gonna tap the F key and add a decal mixer over here. Note that we're in the shader editor down below. And I'm just gonna plug that into my color and my mask. And then for this first radioactive color, what we wanna do is we wanna plug the color into the color and the shape slash alpha into the mask like this. And so now what that does is that takes that decal and it actually places it on our surface. And then what we do to our empty adjusts the size and scale and other things like that. So I can like scale my empty. And when I do that, it's going to scale that decal. Remember, you can tap the G key and hold control in order to place that on a surface. One other tip with that is if you set your axes to local and then do an R and a Z like this, notice how you can rotate that on the Z axis in place. But um, so we could do that for multiple different decal types, right? So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add another decal, maybe like the, let's go with the target. So again, target's going to work the same way. You just place it, click on this, and then you just plug the shape and alpha into your mask and you plug the color into the color right here. And note that that does take a second or two to compile, but then you can take that, you can scale it, you can rotate it. You can kind of do whatever you want. So again, notice how if you tap G and hold control, that's going to place that on this surface right here. So really cool. Um, I think you can add your own custom images in here as well, just by doing F and you can do an add image and load your own image in here. Um, I'm not going to do that, but what I do want to do is take a look at some of these procedural decals. So for example, and actually all of these are procedural, but let's go ahead and let's drop like a frame hatch, kind of like they had in the image in there. So I'm just going to tap G, hold control, and then we're just gonna plug this into our mask. All right, so in this case, what we wanna do is we just wanna adjust the size. Well, notice how I can adjust the size by adjusting the X, Y, and Z right here. So I can adjust this this way. You could also scale it, whoops, you could also scale that empty down if you wanted to adjust it more like relatively in here. So then we could come back and we can adjust the size right here. But notice how this whole thing is actually procedural, meaning it's being generated as an image and then placed on the surface, meaning it's 100% customizable. So you can adjust like the gap in here, you can adjust the hatching, other things like that. So notice how you can adjust the hatching size. So it's really a cool feature in here. I'm really liking this one. Then you could take another one and you could just drop it on top of, um, say we wanted to add like the barcode or something like that. Well, we would just do the same thing. Hold control, place this here. I'm gonna go ahead and scale it down because I can assume that it's gonna need to be scaled down. Then I'm just gonna take that barcode and then do the same thing with my color and my alpha. So I'm gonna drag the color, this, over here. And by the way, I didn't really talk about this, but this is just running into um, one of Materializer's mix shaders. So if we look at this, right, I've just got the decal mixer. So I've got the decal mixer plugged into the color and mask right here um, in order to place those decals. But um, again, you can come in here and you can adjust the overall size like this. 
then if you go into the actual decal mixer itself and adjust the settings, you can adjust like randomization of the barcode. You can adjust the resolution that's in here. So if you wanna make that wider or not as wide, um, this is basically 100% um, customizable. So again, notice how you can adjust these. You can adjust the colors, other things like that. So there's some other really cool stuff they have in here as well. So for example, you can use those same maps um, in order to make it worn, kind of the same as your material. So if you've got some wear in a certain area, you can use this to make it look worn, or you can just add those grunge maps to the decals themselves to make them look worn. So in addition, it also supports normal decals. So if you want to plug normal decals in here, you can put these in here and you can use them in order to make things look um, not flat. So like, for example, he's dropping it on this sphere right here. And um, it's basically using the parallax in there to make things look uh, like, like they're not uninterrupted. So lots of cool stuff in this add-on. I will link to it in the notes down below. Um, there's a ton you can do with this. I can link to some tutorials as well, but big fan of this one. I just wanted to make a quick video about this new feature. All right, so that's it for this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about Fluent Materializer. Remember that it is currently on sale in the Blender Market Black Friday sale. So um, if you haven't picked it up, this could be a good time to do that. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.